Hi, in this episode of Programming Algorithms, we're going to look at arrays again, but we're going to look at arrays of higher dimensions, so-called multi-dimensional arrays. So the ar arrays we've looked at so far are in a straight line, one dimension, that is to say, it's a single row with many columns, you could almost say, or it's a single vector. We can declare arrays, 2D arrays, 3D arrays, 4D arrays, 5D arrays, anything like that. So if we want to declare in pseudocode a simple 2D array, we just declare it as being 8 by 8. So that's uh, an array of integers, the name of it is age, and it's 8 across and 8 down. So it'll look like this. The coordinates we'd be looking at would be rows and columns. So the first is the rows, row 0, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6 and row 7. And then the columns across are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 as well. So if we were recording um, people's ages over an eight-year period, eight people's ages over an eight-year period, we'd have an eight by eight array um, and we'd have values in the array like this. Um, some of those ages or values are large, that's fine. So if we want to address a particular value, we, we could use that for representing matrices in maths or again images on a computer we've mentioned before are made up of individual little pixels. Each pixel has a value in it that represents its color. So if we want to represent an image, a two-dimensional array, it'd be a good way of, of representing it. So if we said print out the top left-hand corner value in the matrix, we'd get 45. If you pop back, you'll see 45. If we um, go down to row 2, the first element in row 2 is 55. If we go to the first row and the second, second column, third column across, second value number 2, we get 34. So exactly the same as a normal matrix, except we have a second box going on there. If we want to print out the, the last value in the bottom right-hand corner, it's to print out 7, 7, and that will get us 23. If we want to assign in pseudocode, this is assigning is the same way we assign with a normal array. We just have this whatever value we want to change, its location in row, column, situation, and we just assign it to be whatever value. If this particular array is of integer type, we assign it integer values. If I wanted to add one to each cell as we did before, we would need two loops this time. We would need one loop to go across the rows and one loop to go down the columns and we'd say for in 0 to 7, for m 0 to 7 embedded inside it, for each value in m, increment in m by 1. That's probably poor naming though and if we wanted to call those variables row and column instead, so for row in 0 to 6 and for column in 0 to 6. So what happens in that array? For row in 0, it's executed first, so the outer loop starts at 0, then the inner loop goes 0 as well, so 0, 0 gets 1 added to it. The inner loop goes to 1, then 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7. Then the inner loop finishes, then the outer loop gets 1 added onto it, and it's row 1. We're into the inner loop, row 1, 0, row 1, 1, row 1, 2, row 1, 3, row 1, 4, row 1, 5, row 1, 6, row 1, 7. And then we go out again and it's, the row is 2 now and it's, the columns go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 again. So that's uh, a, a loop within a loop is how we, how we do a two-dimensional array. Um, if we want to add up everything in the array, it's exactly similar to the, to the one-dimensional array, except we have two loops again. We have a running total, as before, and we add each value into the total. So, as well as a multi-dimensional array of integers, we can have a multi-dimensional array of reals, of characters, of strings, of booleans. The same as a normal array. And as well, we can have a 2D, a 3D, a 4D, a 5D, a 6D, whatever number of dimensions we want to be represented by the, by the computer. Most typically, we'd either have a 1D or 2D array, but we can go as high as we want and address it in the manner we've discussed in pseudocode. All right, thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>